Anytime someone tells your kids, don't tell your parents there's something wrong. Thank you, ma'am. There is something wrong. No question that the case your parents is going everything. to be appealed. The defense continues to view the case differently than the government. There are a number of significant issues that arose during the course of the litigation, and we will be pursuing those issues on the appeal. We will be assessing how to package the issues related to classified information, the issues related to the identities of the undercover operatives, and some of the other evidentiary matters that came up. And I would anticipate that the three of us, Mr. Sadie, Ms. Hay, uh, we'll be continuing on representation through the Defender Office, and I will be continuing to assist in the case now that I've left the office. What's your reaction to you? It's a long sentence. Thanks very much. You heard from Mr. Sadie about the interactions, and we can elaborate on that. What we've obviously seen is somebody who has developed very quickly to seeing that what he did was wrong. He's expressed himself very clearly, very genuinely, as being remorseful. He's taken what actions he could. He's tried to educate himself, reading and thinking about what he did. And I believe that all of the statements that he's made to the court and the ones that you've seen in the public record are sincere, truthful, and complete, and which is one of the reasons it's heartbreaking to see the type of sentence that he received. What are your plans for the appeal? We disagree with many of the ways the case has been uh, decided in the course of the pre-trial motions, the trial, and the post-trial motions, and we expect many of those issues to be brought up on appeal. We will be filing an appeal. Your client talked a lot about wanting to help the community, including other young men, spending 30 years behind bars. Did he have that opportunity? He has already done that to some extent. Although he made an offer to advise, to make a statement or whatever statement the government would to coordinate with the government on making a statement about renouncing his violence and to encourage other young Muslims to think about the types of blandishments they get from the internet and jihadi sites. Those offers were declined. However, he did make them. You know that he made them. He made them uh, in public filings. So I hope that his statements that he's already made are already making a difference with some people. If anybody has heard him, that is going to be something that he is, you will appreciate and hope for. You talked about some willingness to cooperate with the government. Uh, was there any talk of a plea deal throughout the duration of all this? Why wasn't it resolved in that way? That is not something that we're going to be able to comment on at this time. Do you feel like the government took your arguments about the word one, the entrapment, the partial entrapment? Did they take that seriously or not? The, 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 the judge. Well, you heard the judge say that he believed that the imperfect entrapment was a mitigating factor to a limited extent. Regrettably, we disagree with him. We believe that the question of the imperfect entrapment uh, is one that should have been given more weight, and whether or not that is an issue that uh, you know would be raised on appeal, uh, only time will tell. Did the 30 years start the day he was taken four years ago, and, and is there any, that's a solid 30 years he served, or is there? Now, under the federal sentencing law, Mr. Muhammad will receive credit for the time that he has spent in custody, which is nearly four years, and under the federal sentencing law as it exists today, uh, he will receive some limited uh, good time off. We do not know, of course, whether Congress is going to change the law with respect to good time credits uh, in the next two decades. When are you going to file the appeal? Within 14 days. What would you say to any parents who uh, have troubles with their kids? Uh, should they call the FBI or not if they are concerned about radicalization? This case started when the father called the government for help because he was concerned that his son was going overseas. It's hard to imagine any family would feel comfortable calling the government today with that kind of fear of their child going overseas. And it's the wrong message for the government to have sent to any family here to have requested such a draconian sentence. 
I'm glad the judge did not give the 40 years the government requested, but 30 years is still far too long for what happened to this young man. We stood on these steps roughly four years ago, speaking to you about this case. Uh, and, uh, and for you. But anyway, I remember your uh, your strong statements that you made, emotions. Where do you stand today? Oh, that day? The trial, the litigation has brought to the fore some issues that I believe our nation needs to continue to address. The question of radicalization is a serious question. We see that today with young men seeking to leave the country. But that question requires us as a society to consider the different ways in which we can respond. The whole notion of the sting operation as it played out in this trial, I would hope, will lead to some significant discussions by our policymakers. As Ms. Hay just stated, this case began with parents asking for help. As the record shows, the nature of the interactions between Mr. Muhammad and the undercover operatives included their direction, payment to him, their construction of what they did. And they allowed the events to proceed to the day after Thanksgiving. They did not have to do that. And I think that we as a society need to be asking, why did that happen? Is that what we as a society want? Does that